Okay, now we're going to practice how to work with 3D objects. For that, we're going to create a new drawing. So you can choose anything because we're not going to plot this um, drawing. We're just going to use the space, uh, which actually let's check that we have the units of inches, which we do. So keep it on inches. If you don't, just click on inches and accept. And we're going to learn how to do a couple of things. So first of all, we're going to import parts because that is a very useful command. So if you type import, or if you go to file, import, whichever. Um, but as you know, I like to type commands to remember the workflow. Um, I'm going to give you this file, which is a data acquisition system from National Instruments. And Autodesk is going to try and check that the body that you want to import is, um, in fact, something that he recognizes. Okay, so this could take a few seconds. Um, meanwhile, we can check, okay, it's done. So whenever it's done importing, it's gonna give you this, um, it's not a warning, it's gonna give you this comment that you can just click on the part to bring it to your, um, workspace okay and that's pretty much our, our workspace right here our part let's see how the part looks um, let's go to a different um, view and there you go that's our part okay so our part is a DAC that acquisition system that we can use to to um, control and to um, gather signals. So different modules will go into these um, slots and then you can capture your signal through coaxial or ethernet. Okay, so that's the first thing. We imported the part successfully. All right, so let's go ahead and move. So type move, move the part, and now it's gonna be a whole body. So we don't have to worry about clicking different aspects of the body and we're going to move it make sure you don't have the quadrant or actually let's make sure you have the quadrant selected okay that's good and then let's go to top view okay so on top view we're going to create an enclosure for it so we already know how to do the enclosure in 2d now we're going to do the enclosure in 3d so let's type a rectangular shape on zero zero enter and is going to be let's say 14 inches by 16 inches okay that's good that's a typical enclosure size now we're going to do an offset of that part for zero point let's say an offset of quarter inch a NEMA 3 enclosure could be pretty much what we're hoping to get here. Okay, all right. And then now you can rotate your part just clicking on this um, cube. Okay, now we're going to extrude this part. So go to your press pull and careful with what you select. If you select this internal shape, it's going to only be a cube. If you select, or can you escape to cancel? If you select this external shape, it's going to be a bigger cube. What we want to select is the portion in the middle. Okay. And let's say six inches. Enter. Okay, that's good. So now we have our boundary. Right, so to make the back plane, we have two options. Either we do a new layer and create the, the surface, the base on a new layer and have them as independent bodies, or 
use the same layer and at the end create a union kind of like this part that has some a lot of components but it's a single part so it's dependent what this is really depending on what you want to do so from here you start thinking what is this going to be the end goal if it's going to be manufactured on different sections you probably want different layers if you just want to export this as a whole part in a file through email then just create a single body all right so for that let's do another rectangular shape i'm going to go with the uh, option of having everything on the same layer and then i'm going to start at zero zero <coughs> And then we said 14 by 16. Um, that's odd. Didn't I choose 14 by 16 before? Let's see something in here. Quick dimensions. Let's see what is this linear. What is the distance from here to here? 14. Okay, and what is the distance from here to here? 14, okay. Um, let's see, zero, zero. So that is 14 and that is 16. Oh, there you go, yes, 14, 16, okay, cool. All right, so um, in that case, I have a polyline and a surface. So that's my polyline. And I'm going to extrude the polyline um, 0 0.25. Okay. Enter. Okay, so as you noticed, we have an enclosure with a portion extruding out and um, a boundary. So if this is not what we want, we can cancel the extrusion command and try and extrude it again with a different height. So I want to extrude flushed, not both ends. So let's go ahead and choose the polyline once again. Yeah, polyline, extrude. Yes, extrude, and then we're going to say 0 0.25. Okay. All right, the second part of the project of the problem is how to move this object over here and have this base on this um, bottom part, on the base of the enclosure. So for that, let's put some references. So reference number one, and actually now we can use another layer. So layer two is going to be references. Let's say ref lines. Um, and then we're going to work on that layer now. So if we type line and we try select the middle point, we should be able to select the middle point pretty easily. There you go, so a triangle right there. And make sure you have the orthogonal line on, enter. And then repeat line is right click, repeat line, or just simply type line. And then the middle portion here, wherever we see the little triangular cursor, We can rotate it. And it's right there. Enter. 
Okay, so we have two um, reference lines. Good. Yep. And actually, if, see, if you select both lines, um, then you can see where they meet. Don't notice this is on the bottom plane. So one thing we can do is that we can actually, we can draw, if you want it, if, you're, if this is not helpful, you can draw the line on top of this surface. Right, so maybe this is even more useful. Enter, okay, see? And then get rid of the bottom one. Because um, really what we want is the part on top of this top um, base. And then we have to do the same here. Repeat line. Okay, enter. All right, let's try and move this part then to uh, that portion right there to the middle. So we're gonna select the part and we're gonna say 3D rotate. So right there, it's telling you that you have um, the option of rotating around, this is like in statics or dynamics, you rotate around an axis. So you can rotate around the X axis or the Y axis or the Z axis. So if you wanna rotate around the Z axis, we choose the blue uh, circle around the x-axis is the red circle. So click that and enter. Okay, let's see how that looks. Um, all right, so I like that. Let's see more or less where that will take me. Right click to enter. And escape to exit out of the command because you can rotate as many times as you want. All right. So let's go ahead and see where we stand here. So select the part with clicking one time and dragging around the part, the, the body. And then we're gonna say move and select any point. Okay, that's more or less what I want. Enter, repeat move. See, it's gonna be only in one direction first because we have the orthogonal on if we didn't have the orthogonal on, then we can move it freely. But I don't want to move freely because then I might move in the X direction. So cl click on the orthogonal option, click the object, which is called reference block, enter, and then move on top of the enclosure box. Okay. Hide the... Um, lines and move back to the 3D layer or the layer with the 3D parts. Okay, so that is that, as easy as this. If you wanna create a lid, the same thing you create, a, um, actually what we can do is you can, before you combine these parts, you can copy the base and then make a copy and then move it around the X axis, the Y axis, you have it here. But that base will only cover the inside of it. Remember, we have an offset. So another thing we can do is I, we measure, it's gonna be 14 plus, yeah. There's gonna be 14.5, this whole thing. And this dimension is from here. Let's see dimension, linear from here to here, you can see the little square is 16.5. Okay, so we can actually create a, a lid that is that, um, it's exactly that dimension. So rectangular shape, start at zero, zero, and it's going to be, if you draw it on zero, zero, it's gonna start here. So what we can do is move 
for coordinate system two up here. Notice that what we want is we want our control Z. You, or we want X and Y on the base plane and Z on the top plane. All right, so let's try that. Let's try this again. So X and Y and Z is very cool. Nope. There you go. That's the one we want. We want Z very cool so that we're able to simply drag uh, create our, our box. Okay, so that should be good. All right, so if we try it there, we type rectangular shape. Now, if we select this top point, then we have exactly what we want. And if you want it flushed, then you have it here. If you want it larger, you just extend your point. But here's gonna be a lid that is flushed with the surface. So right click enter, or simply type enter, um, and escape out of the rectangular shape if you don't wanna create more rectangulars. All right, so right here you have a 3D solid and a polyline, which is created right now. Just remember that your X and Y need to be on the surface plane, on the plane that you wanna draw. Your Z is your thickness. And we're gonna use Z for thickness in this case. Okay, so what we wanna do is select pool. Yes. Um. Nice, there you go. So double click on it. And the height is, let's say, quarter inch. Okay. Um, so now that's a different, uh, completely independent part. So you can actually have move. So if you wanna, you can move it in different directions to make sure that you know that that's um, the lid for it. Okay. Lastly, we can create relays. So let's create a relay on, on, we can create a round, let's create a round area of 0.2 inches on that one. Enter, very nice. And you can do the same thing for every edge on the boundary. Enter, okay, rotate. Repeat, fill in the curving. Enter. And rotate and repeat. Or you can actually select all four edges if you want um, the same radius, but if you're doing this way, you can actually have different radiuses. So select this one. Well, first of all, repeat. Select that one, enter. And enter, okay. So that is your box. You can go back to your coordinate system. Um, and that's this enclosure that we want to create. So if you want to have different uh, objects in here, that's the same thing. You import them and you bring them to your uh, enclosure.